Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Teacher Cast Podcast, coming to you live from the birthplace of Rocky Balboa in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, with your host, Jeff Bradbury. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Teacher Cast App Spotlight. You are listening to the podcast that brings you the best in educational technology right from the app developers themselves. I am thrilled today that you've decided to make Teacher Cast your home for your professional development. My name is Jeff Bradbury, and if this is the first time you're listening to the show, thank you for joining us today. We have a great show for you. Today, we're going to be talking to Torsten Stach from AppShed, a great educational company that is allowing educators and businesses to enter the App Store and create some amazing mobile content for their communities. And he is here today to talk about the many ways that he and AppShed are revolutionizing the mobile classroom. How are you today, Torsten? Torsten? I'm very good, Jeff. Thanks for having me here, and it's really good to be part of this. Thanks a lot. Thanks so much for joining us. Now, talk a little bit about AppShed. What is AppShed exactly? AppShed is, uh, a pl- we have a strap line called Creative Apps Generation. And what I like about that is it talks both about what we do, we generate apps creatively, but it's also the kind of person we're dealing with. It's the generation of today. It's the, it's the generation that is creatively making stuff. And what AppShed does is it enables. It enables students, if we're looking at schools, but it also enables businesses uh, to create apps and to do just stuff that before was out of their reach, too expensive, too difficult, and now it's coming to the reach of the non-techies. They can be b- building apps, which is really exciting. And so before we get into the meat and potatoes of this, appshed.com is A-P-P-S-H-E-D.com. And of course, you can find their Twitter address at AppShed. And I'm pulling up their Twitter feed here. And it looks like you guys have a really healthy network. Is it true that you guys have had over 100,000 users? Yeah, we've, we've, we've hit that mark. It's really exciting. And uh, they've all created apps. Um, so, yeah, the user base is really taking off now. You can find us at, at AppShed on Twitter. Um, find our YouTube channel uh, at youtube.com slash AppShed. We're on Tumblr, um, Facebook, all of those just with the uh, hashtag uh, or the nick of AppShed. So, yeah, find us on, this, on social networks and get connected. Nice. Well, let's get into the what AppShed actually is. Is it true that anybody can really just sign up for free and start creating apps? It really is true. Uh, I mean, so we have actively, and this is not just experimental, actively involved six-year-olds building apps um, regularly. Some teachers are trying to get five-year-old kids to start building their own apps, not just using them. Um, but then it ranges right up. We run workshops with computer science uh, postgrads. And they're building much more advanced, obviously, uh, with web services and stuff. So it's, it's quite amazing that it can appeal to the different audiences. But yeah, um, from really young, they're, they're using it. And I would asp- suppose that this is good for classroom teachers and school districts that are going to be able to use it. Definitely. So we, we recognized early on teachers were picking this up because they loved it. Because it's not a templated system, it gives them a tool set for them to use, and therefore they can m- mold it around what they want to do. And so AppShed Academy has got a bunch of tools that teachers can use to make the classroom safe, uh, to, to make sure that they're not publishing anything inappropriate, and to just track and monitor their class. So that's part of AppShed Academy. Everything we've talked about, the whole creative stuff is totally free, and I think that's another reason why we're taking off, obviously. Um, but then the add-on tools like AppShed Academy is where t- a school would buy a subscription for these, these features. Now, are these apps that are native on the iOS store or are these apps that you're actually logging in to run by HTML5 or something like that? Yeah, you're, you're using HTML5 to run the apps and that's, um, that's why they can run across any platform. And literally within five minutes, I mean, I'll try and do one now in a couple of minutes for us, build a quick app. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, that you can launch as HTML5. Nice. However, what's great is it's actually working offline anyway. So we've built the functionality to run those offline once it's saved to your desktop, once to your mobile phone. And you can also package it using something like phone gap build. And you can package and put it into the app stores if you want as well. And we do that regularly. Um, commercially, clients are doing that. So it really covers, covers the whole remit of, of how you want to distribute and publish. Nice. So in order to, pu- to actually use this with your community, just to be clear, the school or the classroom does not need to have an Apple ID or not, does not need to have an Apple account. No, they don't need any of that. Um, and they, when they want to start using it, I know some of the other software that they, that they might be trying, 
quite difficult installs, uh, quite difficult network setup. There's none of that whatsoever. Works across all browsers. I mean, we've even got it working on IE8, uh, Chrome, and, and those sort of browsers are your best HTML5 ones. But you just literally go to appshed.com, register a free account, and start building. Nice. Why don't you show us how this works? OK, so I've just come in. I've logged into AppShed. As I say, it's uh, it's just a free account. And we, do, we don't want to block any of the creative stuff. So everything that, that I'm going to show you now is totally free to do. So I'm in my simulator. And uh, I can swipe through my apps. I can go across and I can search for them um, over here. And uh, I've got a whole bunch. You'll probably, when you get started, you won't have that many. So you can swipe through. The simulator works like as though it's a, a smartphone. So you can um, drag it. Um, up and down and left and right, but I'm going to click on the plus button. So those are all those are all apps that you have created through AppShed. These are the apps I've been creating. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, uh, I'm going to click on the orange plus button in the middle of the simulator, and then on the right hand side it brings up a property sheet which basically asks me for the name of my app. Uh, so I might as well go ahead and call this TeacherCast. Um, and then I can go and put in uh, a description. I won't do all of these things. Mm -hmm. I can choose an, uh, a category. So let's say this is uh, for education. Um, I can go and choose an icon. I, um, I can either upload an icon that I've created or go and use from one of the um, folders. We've got a whole li library of all different folders. So that looks a bit like a teacher maybe. So I've selected an icon there um, and then the splash screen. Just some basic settings for your app. Uh, once I've done that, I click on the Save button at the top, and that's it. My app is um, ready to, uh, to start filling it up. It's just given me pretty much a blank app, and uh, I can start putting things in. So prompting me in the middle of the screen to add a new item, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, let's say I want to add an item about, um, uh, about some, uh, some photos or something. So I'm going to choose an icon that represents that, a camera icon. I'm going to give it a little title here and say photos. Maybe I've been to an event or something like that, and I'm putting them in. Um, and then I could put in a subtitle as well. OK, quite straightforward. All I've had to do is select an image and put in a title. And already in my simulator, I've got something visible. I've got something that I can see, oh, I relate to that. Um, maybe I'll go ahead and add in another item. Now, on the, I'm going to look at on the right-hand side um, or where all the tools are. So the simulator's on the left, on the right of the tools, and you can see I could add an image in. Um, that's under the red triangle. And I We've can see here that this is basically designed to work with all of our pre-established social media icons, right? You've got YouTube, I see Vimeo, Flickr, all of our t Twitter, Facebook, everything is built right into here. It's built right in, and okay, Twitter is a great one. So I put in a Twitter, it's put in, uh, clicked on the Twitter link, um, it's put the icon in, and I could say, uh, um, you know, our Twitter feed or something like that, and it'll pull that content straight in from Twitter. So you can see I've I've just clicked on save. I've got the Twitter link now in my simulator. If I tap on that, straight away it pulls up the whole app shared Twitter feed into my app, and all I've had to do is at, click on one button. So we've got connections like that to Vimeo, as you say, YouTube, uh, because you don't want to be recreating content in your app. You want to be mashing those up together and pulling that content in. And there's some great things we're doing with Google Docs, and this is super for education as well. Mm -hmm. So bringing in a Google Doc into your, um, into your app. Now and does, it make, does it make the doc collaborative, or is it just a view only? Actually, uh, they're there too. You'll see on the extensions, that's under the blue hexagon here, there too. The one is for reading, so that'll read the document, um, the data in. The right one works in conjunction with forms. So you can also add form elements like an input box or a select wheel. And when you write that data in, you can post that into your Google Doc. So you can be collecting data from your users. Hmm. OK, so let me just add in um, an image. and. You'll see uh, as I'm adding this in, there's always default content. So I can literally just click on the button to add an image and click Save. And I've got a water droplet now um, on the screen. I could add another link. And uh, it, it has some default content. And that's really great when you're starting to work, especially with students, um, so that they can just get a feel for what, is this, what does this look like as I put it together. Um, and then where it gets really exciting is actually the fact that when we've built this app, we can publish it and we can get it onto our phones literally in a few minutes. So in the top here, there's a, a button that says publish. It's got a little airplane on it. Um, 
that's on the right hand side so I click on that publish button and start the publish process uh, and that's running now in the background if you're doing this with a whole class it might take a few minutes mm -hmm. and you can close that I'll get a little message when that's finished publishing now if you uh, had a phone with you and you have a QR reader or something like that I can now click on the share button which is just next to publish up here at the top and uh, click on the QR code and now that shows me the personal personalized QR code for this app that I've been building now I could go ahead and uh, and scan that and I might do that actually and then I'll show you switch switch over to video okay so I'm busy loading up the app over here uh, it's a bit hard to see what's happening there we go it's loaded up the app and there's the content that I've just been building and the one thing I do notice there is that when we were designing it, it was on a BlackBerry template, and now you're looking at it on an iPhone template, and it works just the same. Everything is crystal clear on it. Absolutely. You'll see that the tab looks slightly different to what it looked like in the simulator, because mm -hmm. um, that's what an iPhone tab should look like, and the one that you looked at previously was the typ typical for BlackBerry. And you can try it out on what it would look like on an Android device, um, maybe on a tablet. We've just got support for Nexus 7s and iPads. And we take care of all of that stuff that normally only high-end developers would be doing. You know, as a, as a student or as a business owner, something you don't want to have to worry about the details of what does it look like on different platforms. We, we take care of all of that for you. You know, I can certainly see why these kids on your video had such a great time. How are, how are you seeing AppShay being used around the world? I mean, again, 100,000 users. What are you seeing app uh, used massive. by? You know, we, we released this thing a few months ago called the App Gallery on AppShed, and you can see that it, it links off our homepage. And you'll see some, you know, all of the apps are available there, the public ones. It's just mad. Every everyone is different, you know. You you think you'd start seeing some patterns, and I mean you do eventually. Like, you know, there are quite a lot of football apps for the, the boys here in London. Love love creating apps for their for their favourite football team and that kind of thing. But actually, the variety is huge. I mean, we get stuff for e-learning. We get stuff for you know my cookery club. Uh, we get stuff for little events that people are running. It's just a huge, huge variety because, you know, everyone's got an idea for an app and now they can actually go ahead and build it. Talk to us a little bit about what a class or a school has to do to create one of these apps. Maybe the sign-up process and talk a little bit about the, uh, the payment structure. Okay, I'm just, I'll tell you a bit about how uh, teachers might use this in the classroom. Now, for, for the last few years, they've all been using the free version and they've just been logging in or registering a free account, which they can go and, and do. Um, but but one of the things that they've um, been asking us for are some more teaching tools. They, they want to take this a bit more seriously in the class. So we launched AppShed Academy, which has got a, um, both teaching tools and also some content, some video tutorials and that kind of thing. And the main features are around security, uh, making sure that the kids aren't publishing anything inappropriate so the teachers can actually review that before it gets published. Um, we've got management so they can, they can keep the whole class together and direct the work that they're doing. Um, oversight and, and track their progress. Obviously, they get access to support and then the ability to publish those apps for a school gallery and that. Now, this is one of the products that we've got and this is a subscription-based product. And the cost is in pounds. It's, it starts from 180 pounds, so that's uh, somewhere just over 200 dollars, and um, and that's for a whole year for the whole school. So we really try to keep the prices very keen, and because we want to enable a, a, a huge number of schools to be taking this on, and that just gives them the the option to to do that. But the, many of them are running without um, buying the teaching tools. We've got some other products as well. So if um, a small business or or an event wants to publish an app to the store we provide that service we submit the apps to the store for them is this a got, plat is this yeah. a platform where if you are having an event like a, a an educational conference you can sign up and create a free app for that one day social event that you're doing it's totally doable now. Previously, you wouldn't have been able to do an app for, for a small event like that or for a short-lived thing. But with AppShed, you can create a web app literally the night before, and that app will be live, ready to use. Um, not in the store. That, 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 you know, especially with Apple, you still got to go through the approval mm -hmm. um, and some of the other platforms. But yeah, as a web app, you know, put some QR codes around the school, for example, for, um, for different buildings, like say on the sports hall, and you could get a list of availability of when the sports hall is available, when it's booked, that kind of thing. Nice. How does it work with um, Google Spreadsheets? Uh, so with Google Spreadsheets, if I um, – actually, uh, what I can do is I'll show you one of the apps we've got. 
Um, let's see if I can. Yeah, here we go. App book. I'm going to just switch it over to the iPhone device so you can see what that looks like. Wow, that was easy. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so AppBook is a, is a bit of a fun project we do where they build their own Facebook type app um, and the kids are building this. So they've got to build a friends tab. So they, they put in all their friends and a bunch of aliens come up here. Um, and what, the next tab is the wall because you know, you've got to have a wall where you're posting messages. And this screen that's just come up here has actually come from a Google Doc. So the, the content, both the images, uh, the text and the links, they've all come in from the Google Doc. And uh, you can actually create a doc with any kind of content and bring that in. And we, we're extending that all the time. So you can bring in galleries and, and maps as well. And then I mentioned earlier about forms. So here's a form on this th fourth tab where you can select my name and that kind of thing. So let's say I'm Eric and I'm posting something. I can type in a message here. And, uh, and then, and then I, I click post at the bottom. Now, this is, uses the Google Docs write extension that we've got. And it's just posted it. Oh, it says it's got an error. Maybe someone's been messing around with it. But um, that, that will post data to the Google Doc. You know, it really does seem like AppShed is the complete solution. I mean, as we said, it's good for classrooms. It's good for school districts. It's good for creative games and, and, and you know, keeping your kids busy. And it's also great for people who are making conferences um you really do have a great solution there congratulations on having a nice product thanks thanks very much jeff and uh you know i we were talking earlier we've got it's uh it's after it is now open source which is just massive we're so, so so excited about that that means whatever you're creating in AppShed. Uh, not only has it been free to create it, but you can get that source and you can do what you like with it. You can host it somewhere else if you like, or you can you can put it into PhoneGap and publish it. Uh, we really want to encourage creativity, and that's why we made that big decision to go open source. And we're excited just to see what people are doing with that now. Nice. Well, congratulations on that. You guys have a great thing. Tell us again where we can find more information about AppShed. So make sure you go to appshed.com, A-P-P-S-H-E-D, appshed.com, and uh, you can check out us there. That's where you build the apps. On uh, Twitter, we at at appshed. Facebook, we also at appshed. Um, and then our YouTube channel is great. There's a lot of resources there. So just youtube.com slash appshed. Nice. Well, Torsten, thank you so much, and uh, good luck in the future with everything, and we hope to see you soon at ISTE. It's been great being here. Thanks for having me on, Jeff. Well, my friends, that wraps up another great episode of the TeacherCast App Spotlight. I want to thank again our friends from AppShed for coming on the show and sharing their great educational tools with us. I hope you've enjoyed this episode, and if you'd like to do something great for us, please check us out at TeacherCast.net and uh, click on our iTunes channel, which is TeacherCast.net slash iTunes. Take a moment to give us a great five-star rating and subscribe to our podcast and broadcasting channel. Um, of course, as we say all the time, the more reviews and ratings that we have, the larger of an audience we have to share with everybody. My name is Jeff Bradbury, and you have been listening to the TeacherCast Podcasting Network. Please join us next time for another great episode. I'll be back then. And until that time, keep up the great work in your class and continue sharing your passions with your students. Good night, everybody.